Hi everybody, it's me, Lisa T, coming at you with some positive energy, trying to light up your life with Lisa. <laughs> Reading The Language of Letting Go by Melody B. Oh my god, I just finished. Uh, and so it was an 18, no, it was 11 to 7, 11 to 8, so 9, 18 hour course in two days on Zoom. 18 hours, 11 till 8, yesterday, 11 till 8 today. Basically nonstop, a couple of 15 minute breaks, one half hour lunch. Um, Oh my God, uh, it, there's still a couple more to come, but um, it was really interesting to note for myself in my healing journey that um, I was like in it to win it and all gung ho. And then like right near the end, I got full of fear and doubt and doubted myself, doubted that I was allowed to exist. I doubted that I was allowed to take up space. I felt fear and shame that I was too much. Um, and this this was all involved in me uh, uh, getting ready to ask a question. And I dummied myself down. Like I knew the answer to the question that I asked. <laughs> um, and I just thought, well, I'll ask this other question because I was too scared to ask the real question I had on my mind because it was going to be too much. It was going to be not maybe in the realm of what the question should be. And I, I, I really, um, I backpedaled for myself and I, I shut myself down and it's so interesting what I was, so then I took Gordy for a walk and I really reflected on all of that. And, um, what I reflected on is, um, it, it, the, the base of it was fear and shame. So there's some shame there. So I've got some shame to resolve, um, still around a certain topic and also, um, that I also realized that this was happening for my higher good, which is a new thing for me. Cause I immediately, I was like, shit, I ruined it. Just, you know, Lisa has a, a great start and all gung ho. And then at the end, like falls apart, you know, um, I had, there was this old dialogue and that is not the truth of my life these days, but a piece of me, because the fear kicked in, it wanted to find, it wanted to land on something. And, um, yeah, I, so on the walk, I was able to like, let go of the actual circumstance of now and see what it was attached to and then get just get to like the certain feeling and also then I realized like it was about people pleasing like I was aware of the time and what other people maybe other people want to ask questions and you know so I I, I negated myself I, I dismissed myself in lieu of making sure that others were happy and um I thought that was going to make, you know, feel better. And and at the end of the day, when I don't take care of myself, when I don't show up for myself, that's when everything gets, you know, raveled all up and tangled all up. So, um, you know, these lessons have to keep coming until we learn how to not do that anymore. So at the end of this moment now, at the end of this day, I'm actually grateful for that happening because this is something that I really have to learn how that I am okay as I am, that I'm allowed to take up space, that I'm allowed to speak my truths, that I'm allowed to show up as I show up, that I'm allowed to have a past, I'm allowed to have these things that have happened to me, it's okay. Um, hence why I'm on these healing journeys, you know? So uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what this has to say. Can you guys all hear Birdie chirping in the background? Last night at this time, he was asleep. Um, so I don't know what the difference is today, but he is, this is all day. This is what I listen to all day. It's become like background noise now. I don't even almost hear it, but I know that it's heard because people have, I heard on Zoom that they could hear it <laughs> when I was asking questions. Anyway, September 11th, conflict and detachment. I got to detach, detach from the outcomes, detach from these feelings detach from like these fearful feelings detach from i'm worried you know i'm worried to, to cause a conflict so to, so to avoid conflict i um what's the word i'm looking for like dummy myself down or push myself down or small myself i, I make myself small to avoid conflict um because worried that that conflict but then i end up but the the result feels worse anyway so i'm just gonna like i gotta start heading straight on into this fear of the conflict i, I bet you there'll be no conflict anyway but let's see what it has to say in a relationship there are those wonderful times when things go smoothly for both people my relationship today was with my zoom class <laughs> and my zoom instructor so in a relationship, there are those wonderful times when things go smoothly for both people and neither person needs to focus too heavily on the concept of detachment. But there are those challenging times when one person is in crisis or changing and we need to detach. So if someone is in crisis or in, in the past, in my like romantic relationships, if that person was in crisis or if a family member was in crisis, I felt definitely like I had to help. I had to take responsibility. I had to show up. Um, 
no, we at this stage of the game. We're grown adults. We can take care of ourselves. And and when we and, and one of the greatest gifts of learning about this codependency stuff is that I've learned to like when a friend reaches out to me for help. I've learned to instead of trying to solve the problem for them, I support them in knowing that they will they will figure this out. We're grown adults. We'll figure it out. And when when we allow when when people around us allow us to figure it out and don't try to solve it. Oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. You should do this. You, when people stop doing that and say, you're going to figure this out, kid, um, you you get empowered and then you learn how to maneuver through all these situations on your own, from your own truths, from your own instincts. So we also need to do that in relation with other, th with others and let, and detach and know that that's not our problem. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out and we're gonna just be here when they do and support them as they move through their process. Um, so yeah, so, uh, but there are those challenging times when a person is in crisis or changing and we need to detach. I was telling a friend last night about their, uh, saying that, that she was she was explaining about a, 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 a thing in there in her relationship and I said, you know, you can trust that that person can figure it out on their own. Um, this is not yours to solve. So. Then there are those stressful cycles when both people in a relationship are in their midst of dealing with intense issues. Both are needy and neither has anything to give. We gotta, you know, we gotta have a full cup so we can give out. And there'll be there'll be times when um, me and my best friend, we, we're great because it seems like we're always balancing that out. We always have a yin and a yang. And you know, when and I'm I'm in a full cup. I'm I'm in a strong place. I don't want to say full cup because my cup is always full. That is my new. That is my new belief system. My cup is always full, because um, I'm living in I live in an abundant supporting universe. Um, but yeah, we we would just we were a good balance. So, but there wasn't I, in all of our years of friendship. I don't I can't remember a time when we were both in like dire need crisis moments. So, um, but that happens. So there are times when uh, so. Um, there are the stresses like when both people are in a relationship or in the midst of dealing with intense issues. Both are needy and neither has anything to give. These are times when detachment and taking care of ourselves are difficult. So when both, if you're in a relationship and both people are in, in that in that needing moment, going through a change and a growth, um, taking care of yourself in that moment, um, at, in, in those times, it can be difficult. So just know that it, that's a difficult situation. It is helpful in these moments to identify the problem. Both people are in the midst of dealing and healing. Neither has much to give, at least for the moment. And it's a temporary moment. It's going to pass like everything else. This too shall pass. And both are feeling particularly needing. So neither has much to give, at least for the moment. And both are feeling particularly needy. That is the problem. That's the problem. So now we're not going to live in the problem. What's the solution? What's the solution? There may not be a perfect solution. Detachment is still the key. But that can be difficult when we need, when we need support ourselves. So you're in a moment, you're two people and you're both going, going through a major change and dealing and healing and um, it's hard to take care of yourself because you're dealing and you're, and you're, 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 you know, the person that you care about is dealing too um, and you're needing support, but they can't give you the support because they're dealing. So what do you do with that? Well, in fact, the other person may be asking for support rather than offering it. So we need support ourselves, but the other person may be asking for support rather than offering it. We can still work toward detachment. We can still work through our feelings. We can accept this as a temporary cycle in the relationship and stop looking to the other person for something he or she cannot give in the moment. Just don't do that in your life. I, I, from my childhood, I had to. It took me years of therapy to like come to the like peace around the fact that I had caregivers that just were incapable of giving what I needed. They were incapable of doing those things. They were incapable of offering the support. Um, so, uh, I, I, but I didn't know how to stop looking like it. So when I was still going through the healing process, I would still like try to communicate these needs and try to get these needs met and say this and say that. And it was just like, I was, you know, knocking my head off a brick wall. So I, I it took me a while to realize, oh, they like, they can't do it and that's okay. So, um, we can't ask someone to give something they don't have to give. So we can stop expecting ourselves to give at the moment as well. So stop expecting yourself to be able to give when you're not in a place to give. It's okay to not be able to give in a moment. It's okay for that person not to be able to give and it's okay for you to not be able to give in a moment, a temporary moment. Communication helps. Identifying the problem and talking about it without blame or shame is a start. So communication can always come in. 
figuring out alternative support systems or ways to get our needs met help. So the good news here is you never want to just rely on one person anyways. That's why I have and, and I suggest having a multitude of support systems because there's there's been moments when I've like made six phone calls and I've gotten voicemail or, you know, yeah, no one's answering. And so I just keep calling and then I call the next number and then I call the next number. And then I, and like by the fifth call, the perfect person answers the phone to help me sort through and process whatever I'm going through. So got to have a multitude of people to turn to. We never want to make one person our sole support system because that's, you know, fallible that's 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 not reality that's not something that can be sustainable okay so uh figuring out alternative supports or ways to get our needs that helps we are still responsible for taking care of ourselves even when we are in the best of relationships we can reasonably expect conflicts of need and the cleaning sorry the clashing of issues to occur in the most loving and even healthy relationship at some point there could be conflicts at some point there could be a clash of issues there's two universes colliding together yours and that other person's um you know we all live in our own reality so at some even in the best relationships there can be a collision at some point of, of clashing sorry of issues it is one of the cycles of love friendship and family one of the cycles of love friendship and family is a clash every once in a while. So it's okay. It is, if it is a healthy relationship, the crisis will not go on endlessly. We will regain our balance. The other person will too. We can stop making ourselves so crazy by looking for the other person to be balanced when he or she isn't. Don't look something to be something it isn't. Don't make some, don't try to control, manipulate, turn something into something just so you feel better. Um, let it be what it is. Talk things out, work things out, keep our expectations of ourselves, other people, and our relationships healthy and reasonable. Keep expectations reasonable. Just, or maybe not have any. <laughs> a good, lowered expectations. <laughs> now, that's a little bit extreme. Like you do, we, we uh, yeah, I'm not gonna touch on that right now. <laughs> so a good relationship will, will be able to sustain and survive low points. Sometimes we need them so we can both grow and learn separately. So uh, sometimes people who are usually there for us cannot be there for us. We can find another way to take care of ourselves. So there's other ways. If you're hitting a, if you're hitting a hump, if you're, you know, if someone can't can't give you what you need, there's the, then then not call another friend. If if you know a clash has come, if it's a healthy, if it's a good relationship, it's a you know something that's really sustainable. They will sustain. It's okay. This is all okay. We just move through this. Just don't get to this point where you you, you tell yourself I can't handle this because you can handle this. Okay, um, here's your prayer for today. Today I will remember that my best relationships have low points. If the low point is the norm, then I may want to consider the desirability of the relationship. If the low point is a temporary cycle, I will practice understanding for myself and the other person. God, help me remember that the help and support I want and need does not come in the form of only one person. Help me be open to healthy options for taking care of myself if my normal support system is not available. There's options. We're adults. We have options. We have choices. We have abundance. We have other ways. Um, don't rely on just one thing. And, and you know, just to, just know that life comes with its ups and downs and it's okay. And if you're made to make it, what's meant to be will be. If you make it through, you make it through. Thanks for watching. Love you all.